Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wake for Stock Market with an extra update for you after the trading session 2nd of February has ended. We have earliest confirmation today that there's probably been a trend change and that that bounce is probably over. We can have further confidence with a new low below 1872.7, I'll explain why when we get to hourly charts, and if we get a new low below 1812.29 and a downward stay with an increase in volume, we'll have classic technical confirmation of a breakout. The short term target for the next wave down is 1511. If that target is wrong, it may not be low enough. And look out for surprises to the downside in this market, not just in terms of price, but in terms of things like access to trading accounts and overall market behavior. That warning again. Let's just make this a little bit larger. And I still have my bull wave count first because I'm still waiting for that modified Dow theory to confirm a huge market trend change from bull to bear. When I have the S&P and NASDAQ confirm major new swing lows, then I will discard this more bullish wave count. It's bullish still at super cycle degree. Within super cycle wave 5, cycle wave 4 had to turn up sooner or later. It's likely to show alternation with cycle 2, which was a zigzag. The triangle for cycle 4 has been invalidated. There are two structures now left, a combination or a flat correction. For a combination or a flat, we have a B or Y wave at primary degree beginning here. Sorry, C or Y wave. If it's a C wave, which is more likely, it's going to be a five wave structure. If it's a Y wave, it's probably going to be a flat correction, and we need to see the first 535 down complete. For a Y wave, we would have A, B, and a C wave completing. For primary wave C, we would have one, two, and a third wave completing. So the target for both of those ideas for this next wave down for the bull count is going to be the same because the structure from here is a five. One, two, three, four, five. Now also we can move the degree of labeling here back down one degree, it could be another one too, and the bear wave count will look at that preferred option. It could be a three, four, and this bull wave count will look at that other idea. If that's the case, then there is inadequate alternation in structure between two and four. There's a little bit of alternation in structure. Two is a single zigzag, and four is a double zigzag. Two is deep and four is shallow, so there's some alternation. But it would be more likely that they would be different structures. They're both of the same zigzag family. Minor wave two kind of looks a little bit like a flat, but you can't see it as a flat because the B wave is less than 90% the length of the A wave. The minimum requirement there is a <coughs> So this is a zigzag, and here's a double zigzag. Upward movement for this bounce lasted a Fibonacci eight days, if it's over here, that is. That was what we expected, and it found resistance about the cyan trend line. I've drawn this from price from an anchor off to the left of the chart across these two lows and extended it out so it's reasonably shallow. It's fairly long held and it's been repeatedly tested about eight times I think in total. So this is reasonably technically significant. It's offering good resistance again and I will expect that's probably going to be it for upward movement because of reasonably strong resistance at this trend line. Let's have a look at the bear wave count. The, both of the hourly charts are the same. Both of them are seeing this as a double zigzag, so I'll do the commentary at the hourly chart level with this bear. The bear wave count looks at a different super cycle structure at the monthly chart level that has a better fit. It has a better fit at grand super cycle degree, and to see that, look back at historic analysis at my grand super cycle wave count. If we have had a massive trend change at super cycle degree at the all-time high for the S&P, then we're in a big, huge market crash. I'm waiting for NASDAQ and the S&P to make major new swing lows below the October 2014 lows before I discard my more bullish wave count. If this bear market is bear wave count is correct, then the S&P is in a huge bear market that has no lower limit, and it's going to take several years to unfold. This is a very, very bearish wave count. That's why I'm being really conservative about it. If this wave count is correct, then we have a third wave down at intermediate degree. If this third wave reaches below the target and is particularly long, I might move the whole degree of labeling within this 
up one degree. This is also just possible. It could be primary wave three. But when I look at it at the monthly chart level, this is how I want to label it at this stage. Intermediate wave one and intermediate wave two ended up here as a very, very deep zigzag. At 1428, intermediate three would reach 2.618, the length of intermediate wave one. That's the appropriate ratio for that target because intermediate wave two was so very deep. At the beginning of intermediate three, which may only subdivide as an impulse, we have one, two, one, two, and now we may have another one, two. When I look at what's happening with FTSE, the recent upward movement for FTSE quite simply cannot be a fourth wave correction. It's back into what would be first wave price territory. So for FTSE, we can only have a series of overlapping first and second waves. I'll be updating that analysis just for members only today, later on in the afternoon. For the S&P, because this upward bounce is below this first wave price territory, this could be a fourth wave, as I have it labelled for the first daily chart, but it could also be another second wave. If this is a second wave, it's a double zigzag, and now we don't have the problem of a lack of alternation and structure between this second wave and a possible fourth wave. It's another second wave, possibly. I do lean toward that idea a little, and I'm going to let momentum be a guide. If the next piece of downward movement is very strong indeed, then I will leave the labelling here as a second wave. But if the next piece of downward movement shows only a small increase in momentum, it could be a stronger fifth wave. Or if it shows weaker momentum than this first wave here, it could be a fifth wave. And I'll move this up one degree. For now, I think it's more likely another second wave correction. Upward movement has found strong resistance at the cyan trend line and downwards movement is finding some reasonable support at this sloping cyan line which has provided support before. I expect some support at this line may be holding up downward momentum. I would expect that once price manages to break below this line we may start then to see a really strong increase in downward momentum. We have some evidence at the hourly chart level that we probably have a high in place, but we don't have that evidence yet at the daily chart level. When we get a full daily candlestick below this channel and not touching this trend line, then I will move the invalidation point down here at the daily chart level. For now, we must understand there is some risk still that my labelling here is wrong, that the second wave or fourth wave is not over and that it could continue higher. This is the risk. It can't move above 2081.56. Let's look at how it's unfolding at the hourly chart level where the end of minuet 1 down here is this point down here. And here's minuet 2. It subdivides best at the hourly chart level as a double zigzag, 535. A 335 flat in the opposite direction, a 3 in the opposite direction joins the two structures, the two zigzags and the double. And here we have another 535. Triangles are counted as 3s. This is a barrier triangle, I expect. It fits really well on the 5 minute chart. The D point is slightly above B. The BD trend line is essentially flat. Now this is the only Elliott wave rule which has any grey area whatsoever which is somewhat annoying that grey area. But when I look at the structure at the five minute chart level that's how I want to see this movement as a barrier triangle. If there's a triangle in here what that means is this upward movement can't be an impulse because you can't have a triangle is the sole corrective structure for a second wave, and so it's a B wave, which means that this upward movement is most likely a zigzag. Within microwave C, we have one, two, three, four. On the five minute chart level, again, this subdivides as a triangle in the final fifth wave. We now, importantly, have four full hourly candlesticks below the lower edge of this channel and not touching it, whether I draw the lower trend line to this low or to this low. Either way, we've got a pretty clear breach at the end of the session. That gives us the earliest first indication or confirmation that this upward movement is most likely over 
and the next wave down has most likely begun. If we get a new low below 1872.7, that's this point down here, we could have more confidence. Price would be telling us at that stage that downward movement could not be a B wave nor a second wave correction within this Y wave. At that point, this piece of movement would have to be over. Downward movement would be a new, different wave. And again, as I said, we can have full and final confidence that this bounce, this bear market rally is over when we have a new low below its start on a downward day with an increase in volume. Then we would have a classic technical analysis breakout. The target for Minuet 3 is at 1511, where it will reach 1.618, the length of Minuet 1. Once we get a little bit closer to that target, if it looks to be too high, I'll start to then calculate lower targets for you. If this target is wrong, it's going to be too high. Expect surprises for this bear market to continue to be to the downside. If we have had a trend change up here, then within Minuet 3, no second wave correction can move beyond its start above 1947.2. This is that cyan trend line copied over from the daily chart. We got pretty close to it, almost touching it at the hourly chart level. Some classic technical analysis. Let's make that a little bit bigger. I was a bit concerned on this upward day. We had a pretty strong upward movement and it came on an increase in volume. For two days in a row here, price rose and it was supported by volume. And this is the strongest upward day volume that we have since the all-time high. It's stronger than any of these prior upward days, including off to the left of the chart. That concern was somewhat alleviated when we had a new high coming on a clear decrease in volume. The rise in price here was not supported by volume. And now that concern is further alleviated that we have a reasonable downward day which shows an increase in volume beyond the prior day. So this fallen price has some support from volume. Apart from this outlier, Overall, the volume profile does continue to be very bearish. As price falls, volume rises. As price rises, volume falls, with the exception of this day. And so overall, the volume profile supports that bear wave count quite nicely. ADX and ATR are both based on 14-day averages, so they are both lagging indicators. ADX is declining. That tells us that there is no clear trend. And so this upward movement is not a trend according to ADX. And also, really importantly, we don't have ADX telling us there's been a trend change because the negative DX line remains above the positive DX line. This upward movement looks like a classic bounce, a bear market rally. It does not look like a new bull market trend. To the upside, price found resistance about 1950, a previous horizontal trend line which provided previous resistance and support, and that's held. Price has bounced back down off that. The next area to provide support would be about 1878, about 1878, which is previously again provided off to the left of the chart actually, previously provided support and resistance and provided some support about there. And so I would expect on the way down for price again to find support here before breaking through. If we get a breakthrough of this support line on a downward day with increased volume, that could be the earliest indication of a downward breakout. And if we get a new low below this point on a downward day with an increase in volume, that would be extremely strong confirmation that we're in the next wave down. For now, ATX tells us there's no trend. ATR is also flat. That's more indicative of a range-bound market than a trending market. On balance, volume again might be leading the way. It came up to find resistance at this green trend line, which is almost horizontal and goes back a fair way, so it's got reasonable technical significance. It's bounced down from there. That may be helping price to move lower. The lines for support for on balance volume are this short held, but not too steep pink line, and this more tested blue line. On balance volume may well find some support there, 
If it breaks below one or either of these lines, that would be a further bearish indication. To the upside, if on balance volume turns back up and breaks above this green line, that would be a strong bullish indication. For now, on balance volume is giving us bearish rather than bullish indications. If ADX is correct and we're not trending, then we'd be expecting price to swing from support to resistance and back again, and we can use stochastic to stochastics to help to tell us when one swing ends and the next begins. Here stochastics reached overbought, price reached up to resistance and so we'll be expecting price to continue lower until it finds support and at the same time stochastics reaches oversold. Stochastics isn't there yet and neither is price and so that range bound approach also expects downward movement. There's no divergence with that approach and the Elliott wave counts at this stage. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis and I hope that all of our members are having a fabulous day.